Hey everyone, today in Toto Santos, we're going to be replacing this stretch of freeway with a surface avenue. And we're not just going to be ripping up the freeway and putting down a surface road. That would be uh, pretty easy to do, but not quite as interesting. So the way we're going to approach this is imagining that the city of Toto Santos is actually in the middle of this project. Uh, and of course that means that we're going to have to build a road construction site, uh, which I haven't done in a while in city skylines. So it's gonna be interesting to see how that turns out. Uh, but before we get to that, I wanted to build an interchange to hook up the road we're going to be working on with the main east-to-west freeway that runs through the city. Because this used to be an interchange between two freeways, I'm imagining that it formerly was a cloverleaf interchange here. And what they've done is ripped up the cloverleaf ramps on the side of the interchange uh, where they're turning it into an avenue. And they just have like standard diamond interchange ramps there. And then on the other side, uh, we still have the original cloverleaf ramps. Uh, so it's going to be kind of split between a cloverleaf and a diamond interchange, which I think is kind of an interesting uh, setup to have. And it uh, definitely represents uh, certain things that you see in San Juan. They have quite a few interchanges that are like this, where they'll have one or two cloverleaf ramps, uh, but that aren't set up like your traditional partial cloverleaf, where you have the uh, cloverleaf ramps on opposing sides of the interchange. And I just think that serves pretty well to illustrate the, uh, the history uh, behind this interchange and the process that has led it to look the way that it does. Now, obviously, it's always a struggle to make these cloverleaf interchanges by hand. Uh, you can use network multi-tool if you just want a quick and dirty way to get a good looking interchange uh, without struggling too much with move it. Uh, that's definitely a good way to go. Uh, I didn't have network multi-tool at the time of recording this episode. Um, and uh, I do have it now and I've been using it recently. And I, I think it definitely works. Um, for certain applications, but sometimes cloverleafs, you want a little bit of irregularity in them. Like if you go around San Juan, at least on Google Maps, um, you'll be able to see that a lot of the cloverleaf ramps are all kind of lopsided and uh, they look a little bit smush, like they've been just really fit to the space that they have. Um, so you get kind of these lumpy looking interchanges sometimes. So I didn't necessarily want to go for th that extreme of a look uh, in this case, but uh, that's just something I thought I'd mention because some of the interchanges we're going to be building uh, in other parts of the city are going to include that. But in this particular case, I think having network multi-tool to build the smooth curve of the ramps for us uh, would have been nice, but uh, you know, it's too late for that. And honestly, in terms of uh, mods that I've been adding and uh, assets that I've been adding, the series is just kind of getting all jumbled up uh, because I've recorded about 10 episodes in advance, uh, at least at the time of doing this commentary. And, uh, you know, where I am in building is just way ahead of where I am in these episodes. So if I ever start talking about mods that aren't actually in the series or anything yet, uh, that's probably why, just because I'm getting uh, a little bit confused going back and forth between the game and editing these videos. And then, of course, once you start factoring in live streams, um, that's just going to get even worse because the live streams will be out. Uh, before the videos that showcase the mods we're using in the live stream. I mean, just it's it's going to be weird for a while until everything catches up. But I've been trying to take the recording process of the videos at a bit more of a leisurely pace. So hopefully that'll allow everything to kind of even out and catch up and we'll be able to do things a bit more in real time. Uh, that way, you know, all your suggestions and everything, which I do read all of them and take them all into account. Um, but you'll be able to see those kind of turn around a little bit more quickly. <laughs> Of course, that's assuming everything goes according to plan, which is very unlikely. So we'll just have to see how it goes. And, uh, you know, no matter what, we're going to be making a lot of progress in Toto Santos. Now, going back to this interchange, I wanted to give it a bit more attention to detail and just be a bit more mindful of where these details are going. Uh, in particular, I really like using these uh, rounded expressway pillars uh, for overpass pillars. Uh, and that's something we're going to be using a lot of going forward. And then of course, I also don't want the cars to crash into it. So we have to run a crash barrier around it. Uh, I just really like how it kind of balloons out to go around the pillars and then closes back up and just turns into a two-sided crash barrier. Uh, I quite like that look. It's a bit tedious to make, uh, but thankfully we have intersection marking tool to take care of the rest of the details for us. Uh, so we just really have to do that little part by hand and then do the rest with IMT, put down a couple props, these freeway exit signs, and just a few other things uh, to indicate to the drivers, you know, how they should merge and exit and all those usual details. Oh, and also these little freeway entrance signs that I really like. Uh, so you know that you're actually uh, going on to a controlled access freeway from the surface avenue. 
So we're going to come back later and finish the details on this interchange, mostly just with some greenery and trees and making it look a little bit more uh, cohesive with the environment. Uh, but first, I wanted to get to work on the other side of the freeway, which is actually still a freeway that connects up to this big interchange that we made. Oh, like, uh, I think like 30 episodes ago, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> But anyway, we have the split in the freeway here where it kind of widens out. And I wanted to take this opportunity to do a set of left lane exit and on ramps, uh, just because that's not something you usually see. And I thought it was kind of a good opportunity to take advantage of the space in an efficient way. And then on the other side of this intersection, which looks kind of like a flying squirrel, we're going to have a set of on and off ramps that are just normal. And this is going to access an avenue that runs perpendicular perpendicular to this. And so we basically just have a diamond interchange that's kind of inverted. Um, and this is going to be one edge of the freeway. They're probably gonna leave this big interchange intact, or maybe they have plans to reduce it to a smaller interchange, or maybe just rip it up altogether. Uh, but that would be like a longer term plan. And for now they're leaving this side of the avenue as a freeway. And everything south of that is going to turn into an avenue eventually. And uh, what we're gonna be building today is the in-between part uh, between the first interchange we made and this one. And that's going to all be either a fully fleshed out avenue with some commercial buildings on the side of it. And part of it's going to be in the process of being torn up and turned into an avenue. So we're just really quickly spacing out these pillars properly on these long freeway bridges here. And then we're gonna go back and add these concrete wall props uh, on the middle of the freeway part. I mean, I use this uh, normal two-way avenue uh, just kind of as a bridge in between the freeway and the actual avenue that we're going to be working on right now. I didn't have a particular plan going into this build, which was probably not the best idea because I ended up trying several things uh, before I got something that looked good. Uh, and I eventually settled on this. So we're going to have one side of the freeway being worked on as they tear it up and put in a new surface. And then the other side of the freeway uh, is still intact and that that's where the traffic going both directions can travel. So that's why we have this asymmetrical road on one side, uh, which is the remaining freeway surface, and then the dirt road on the other side uh, so that all the industrial vehicles uh, that are working on the construction site can go back and forth. And I think off camera, I do actually ban all cars that aren't like service vehicles, emergency vehicles, and industrial vehicles uh, from going on that road. So we do get a little bit of industrial traffic on there, which is kind of cool. It, it just brings it to life just that little bit. Uh, so it kind of feels like a real working construction site, uh, which I don't think there are really mods that could do that. I mean, I suppose with PO, you could probably set up a really complex system of movements for different props, but that's not the sort of detail I wanted to go into with this build. So I'm just trying to make do with what I already had in my asset collection and mod collection. So once I had set up the kind of logic for this road system where you have the detour traffic uh, passing over to the other side of the road, it was really pretty straightforward to get started on detailing uh, because obviously uh, all the details of a construction site, all the cones and barriers and that kind of stuff, at least as far as the non you know construction workers there are concerned, uh, is pretty straightforward and it all revolves around telling the cars where to go. So I really just have to line all these things up with the lanes that I've already put in place. And then we also need to make sure that they drive at a appropriate speed for a construction site. So I slow down uh, pretty much all the lanes and gradually work up and down the speed limit as they approach and leave the construction site. Less detail.
So I wanted to make sure that uh, all these details and the functionality that I attempted to build into this actually work, and they seem to work, which is nice. And this is actually a pretty direct route from the north part of the city by the shore over to the south part of the city, uh, which we're going to be developing over the next few episodes, uh, and the main freeway that runs east to west. So people actually do take this route, despite the really low speed limit, which I think is kind of hilarious. <laughs> Um, uh, but you do actually get to see them, you know, go down here, slow down, cross over, and follow all the directions that I've placed down in terms of signage. And, uh, you know, they have the flaggers and the and they have some pilot cars. Uh, they don't actually use them. I just wanted to use those props because they look kind of cool. Now, I wanted to represent the progress they've made on this construction site uh, by having one side of the avenue really freshly paved with this new dark pavement. And there's this little seam here in between the... Uh, unsurfaced area and the freshly surfaced area and uh, this whole side of the avenue is going to be completely developed there's a big commercial area we're going to add well it's not that big but it's uh you know it exists unlike the other side which is uh, completely empty and old pavement and there's just going to be an undeveloped lot that they're still attempting to sell to some kind of developer and i wanted to extend that theme here by uh, literally extending the pavement and uh, putting these I guess they're rollers uh, on it, just because I had this prop and I thought it, you know, that's something you'd see at a uh, road construction site, obviously. So that would mean that this area of pavement is like really, really new, like probably still hot. I don't really actually know too much about how roads are surfaced like this. I'm just kind of guessing based on the sort of props I had and, uh, you know, my experience with driving through construction sites like this. I, I kind of messed up the logic I had originally intended for this, um, where you have the through traffic at going on the other side of the freeway and I probably should have put the barrier on the other side of the traffic if that makes any sense so the barrier is actually separating the traffic from the construction site as a whole uh yeah I kind of messed that up but it still ends up looking pretty cool and we have this little dirt lane where the through traffic goes I mean it's not like unrealistic I don't think it's probably just would make a little bit more sense in a busy urban area like this to just have the traffic completely rerouted from the side where they're working. So I originally said that it was pretty straightforward how the details worked and of course I still managed to get it wrong but yeah this is what we end up with. Maybe I'll go back and change that to what I originally envisioned but I don't I honestly don't think the amount of time and effort that would take would be worth it. Anyway, for the worksite itself, I wanted to add just a few details that I imagined you'd have in this kind of place. We have employee parking, a little mobile office, and a bunch of supplies staged here, like pipes for the sewers or whatever. I, I really don't know what exactly what kind of stuff you'd have in this kind of place. And then we also have some various heavy construction equipment and machines like bulldozers and uh, some excavators uh, and the accompanying piles of material that they're digging up. Not sure exactly what the logic is behind all of this, but I'm just trying to make it look like the organized chaos that I imagine a construction site is. We also have this purple semi delivering some more materials, which I thought was uh, kind of nice. And it complements uh, pretty nicely the industrial traffic that ends up going back and forth on this road. Other than that, I just felt the need to give these uh, flaggers here a couple of chairs so they can sit down when there's no work to be done. Probably not the best in terms of workplace safety, but uh, I, I'm not going to worry about that too much. And one last detail, I didn't think these red and white berries quite fit the look I was going for, so I come in and replace most of them with these barrel cones. Well, they're not cones at all, they're just barrels, actually. Okay, now it's time to fill in the surrounding area. First, we're going to do those interchange details that I talked about at the beginning of the episode. Uh, first, I just wanted to cover up the ugly cliff texture with grass theme decals, and then do a quick coat of uh, oil resource just because I like the texture, and then of course, a bunch of trees here and there. This is me trying to go light with trees, so don't judge too hard, I'm still learning. I do try to come back and delete a few of them and place some more trees a little bit more mindfully to kind of look like this is an area that they've purposefully landscaped and then instead of just having forests grow up randomly in the middle of an interchange, uh, as much as I like that aesthetic. And now we get to connect the avenues that come out of the university district uh, up with the road that we just made. And we're going to fill in this entire area over the next uh, three or four episodes, I believe, and it's going to be very satisfying to see it all come together, uh, at least in my opinion.
Now, something I wanted to do here is have a difference between each side of the avenue just beyond the visual appearance. So in the far right lane on the newer side of the avenue, we have some custom on-street parking that I'm just making with IMT. We're going to come back in a second and add some car props in addition to the normal two lanes of traffic. And then on the other side, it just has the three lanes of traffic. So that's something that they do when they come through and uh, update this avenue. Uh, they're adding on-street parking, which, you know, has its downsides, but it also does work to uh, reduce traffic speeds generally. Um, so I believe it's considered to be a little bit more pedestrian friendly, funnily enough. Obviously, it's not an ideal solution to make a place more pedestrian and walkable, but maybe that's just the sort of compromise they had to make uh, to get this place built. So in order to get the cars in the parking spaces, I just used all the car props that I had, and I tagged them all with the word car in Find It. And that way, you can bring up a tab that just shows every single asset that you have tagged with a certain label. And then you can set a keybind to randomize all the things that are showing on your Find It screen. And you can just hit that and very easily get a random assortment of whatever assets you have tagged. In this case, it's cars. That's something I learned from Infrastructurist. I'll link his guide down in the description. It's a very good guide on how to use this, and it's a very flexible tool. I highly recommend you use Find It tags if you aren't already. It can be kind of a pain to set up in the first place, especially if you have like over 4,000 assets like I do. But I think it's something worth considering doing as opposed to going through all the various uh, filters that are built in to Find It. They're still good and you'll use them a lot, but I think having these custom tags for things that you do very frequently, like putting down a bunch of cars or putting down a bunch of buildings, uh, that works great for it. And it absolutely will save you time. So we have these slightly newer commercial developments, uh, which I think look pretty nice. This is the Red Rock Plaza by King Leno. That's a classic asset set that will work in a lot of different city styles. Um, just added a few signs, finished up the parking and added some detour signs and that kind of thing as well, just to show all the drivers how to navigate the uh, road closures. Okay, now we're gonna add some roads and some houses to the surrounding area. This is pretty much all gonna be low density residential and I've been using a couple different styles of residential development uh, for these lower density areas. One of them is with more authentic Caribbean style assets. And uh, another one is with uh, slightly less authentic uh, Mexican houses, but that give a slightly more dense and uh, tightly packed look. Um, so in this case, we're going to be going primarily with the uh, Mexican house style. Uh, because I want to go with a really tightly packed and sprawling look in this region of the city, but I'm also using a few of the other ones here and there just to break it up a little bit. Like right here, along what formerly would have been the freeway, now it's obviously a loud construction site. I'm sure eventually though they're going to be happy because there will be a quieter road and maybe some businesses that they can patronize. Uh, I also have a sound barrier there, of course, just trying to keep everything making sense that this area had a freeway running through it not too long ago, so I'm just trying to keep that in mind as I go. Well, that's about it. We're just going to pop down some more houses in a before and after. Now, next episode is episode number 50. It's going to be a special one, and it's a pretty big one. So there might be a small delay in between now and the next episode, but I hope not. What I do hope is that you enjoyed your time in Todos Santos today. I can't wait to see you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.